Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. What's up, Eloeros? How we care for our minds affects how we experience life. So it's important to invest time and care into keeping them healthy. All right. And look, there's plenty of ways to support a healthy brain, like learning a new language, right? Or, or taking mm. power naps. That's mm. what I do. Um, you know, I love my na- I love I love my power naps. Uh, but there's also better help online therapy. And that's what we're here to talk about. Better help. It's online therapy. Okay. It offers video, phone, and even live chat only therapy sessions. So you don't have nobody has to see you, you know, when you're getting your therapy, Rachel. I know you like to get, you know, dolled up. <laughs> but you could just do it old school on the phone and get and get there, get, you know, therapy from there. Right. I love that option. I do. Um, and, you know, any 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 thoughts with you guys about, you know, why someone should try therapy? Well, Jamie, how we care for our minds affects how we experience life. I remember being told many times while I was pregnant, happy mommy equals happy baby, happy mommy, happy baby. And so I always made an effort to just focus on happiness throughout both pregnancies because I wanted my boys to be happy. And I think it's really important to be in tune with your mental state and realize when there could be the need for some help. And now in 2022, it's so amazing that there's better help online you're matched up with a therapist within 48 hours it's so 2022 people like old school people like me who've sat with therapists in their office like this is so much easier and it'll allow you to take better help of yourself focus on your happiness and i know as being a member of the Latino community, there are some bad habits that I've been subjected to that I needed to really call out and say, yo, I'm gonna break this chain right now. Reverse, let's reverse, reverse. And therapy can help doing that, you know? So holler at better help therapy. And Frank, this is affordable as well, which is what we like. Jamie, I'm seeing that and being uh, in Washington Heights and going through COVID, I'm gonna have to speak to a lot of people because we need therapy up here. And it's, yeah, like Latinos, you said, it's very, yeah. it's very affordable and then in-person therapy. And what I love about it, guys, that you can be matched up with a therapist in under 48 hours. Yeah, that's amazing that's, to me. That's, that's, that's a big plus. Um, and another big plus is our listeners get 10% off their first month wow. at BetterHelp.com. I... Incredible. www.BetterHelp.com slash Latinos Out Loud. I, wow. That's better b e t t e r help h e l p dot com slash Latinos Out Loud. This episode of Latinos Out Loud is brought to you by McDonald's. You know our crew could talk about McDonald's all day long, and we'd still run out of time. That's because we can't get enough of McDonald's delicious menu. Filled with some of our absolute favorites, like their crispy golden fries, right? Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's truly impossible to resist papitas, even when they're not your own. That's true. For real, I stay stealing my friend's fries. Oh, yeah. I always steal my friend's fries Um, and my family's. But um, (laughs) let's talk about breakfast, all right? Because I love McDonald's because their breakfasts are out of this world. The breakfast platter is my favorite, you know? It's like a a build-your-own breakfast sandwich kit. Yes, great choice. You know, and it satisfies my sweet and my savory breakfast cravings, okay? Mm. Let me tell you what it comes in, what it comes with, all right? Warm biscuit, right? A savory <laughs> hot sausage. They got some fluffy scrambled eggs. You know how they do. They Love got it. the crispy hash browns. Mm. And of course, to top it off, the golden brown hot cakes. Oh my God. This is my breakfast platter paradise, okay? So wow. good. So good. Can with I just syrup. say something? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, when the syrup makes its way to the other members of the platter, mm. when it creeps its way onto the fluffiness of the scrambled eggs and the hot sausage and the hash browns, isn't right. that like a home run? Rachel, <laughs> enough, all right? I'm hungry now. Um, Frank, <laughs> what so is, what's your favorite McDonald's breakfast dish? Come on, guys. You know me too long. You know it's the sausage McMuffin with egg, okay? The, with the Ooh. hash browns, which fits perfectly in between the muffin and the egg. Oh, yes. in the morning, it's, I mean, come on. You can't go in, I mean, the savory hot sausage, okay, with a slice of melted American cheese on top, with the crispy English muffin? <laughs> Come on. It's like, Guys, a you know me well. big, it's like a morning Big Mac. Oh, there you go. There you go. You hit it right <laughs> in the head, Jamie. Boom. Okay, okay That's Rachel, what it is. the guys, we're done talking. We want to know what's your, what's your go-to McDonald's breakfast dish? Yes. 
You know, I'm a sausage burrito type of girl. Discovering the oh. green chilies can make for a tasty morning surprise, Frank. And I can count on McDonald's for a great one-handed breakfast, okay? Comes in very handy when you're a multitasking mm-hmm. mom of two. And the sausage burrito <laughs> is loaded with fluffy scrambled egg, pork sausage, melty of meltiest cheeses, green chiles, and onion wrapped in a soft mm. tortilla. That's my go-to, people. And I got one hand to eat with and one hand to do whatever I got to do. Change diapers. You know how it goes. Yeah. Uh Wow. Eloeros. I mean, after after we eat our breakfast platters, our sausage McMuffins with eggs and our sausage burritos, there's only one thing we say to ourselves after eating. McDonald's, I'm loving it. I'm loving loving it. it. Yay. Yo 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 Let's get to it, because there's nothing to it, okay? That's right. We just got to do it, because there's a lot going on. Hi. Okay, wait. Identification. Who are we? <laughs> Latinos Out Loud. Where uh-huh. are we? The Latinos Out Loud podcast. Who am I? One of the hosts of Latinos Out Loud. Hi, I'm Rachel La Loca. Let's go. Who else is in the building? I'm, uh, Jay Ferns is here. Hey, what's up? Frank Lives is in the building. What's going on? Yes! We are here. We are representing Latinos. The L, the, L, the O, and the L are back together. Yes. Here we are. It's back a lot going together. On. A lot going on in the Latino world right now. It's there popping. is. This was one of those weeks where it was like, oh, we need to talk about this. Piece. It's hot. Ta caliente. Ta caliente. Aren't you so glad we have this show that like we could come together, come together yeah. right and now? And are like, you better talk about this, y'all. Wow. Mm. Absolutely. So where do we go first, guys? I don't even want to talk about my life. I just want to talk about what's (laughs) in the news. And I have a lot going on in my life, but I'm going to put my life on hold for the Latinos Out Loud podcast and talk about what we really need to talk about right now. So where are we starting? The Batman, the Bat, the Bat, the Bat, the Batwoman thing. Well, Rachel, you've been you played Batgirl in 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 a couple Halloween parties in the past, right? So know this? Did you dig (laughs) deep? Did you talk to my mom? You spoke to my mom. Talk to my mom. It's fine. It's fine. And, but this was, yeah, a big deal when HBO Max, uh, Warner Brothers, actually, um, and they canceled the new Batgirl movie what after f- already filming it. They already Joe, spent that's crazy, man. million dollars on this movie, but they're they're not they're not going to release it as a tax and they're going to get a tax break on that, I guess. So um, they're literally just like, nah, this movie... I guess and they're they never going to show it. They're never going to show it again. They're just like shelving it. Well, it. it's Hollywood. They said, so right? you, you, Damn. they scrapped it. I'm sure a couple of years from now, so it'll pop up somewhere. But um, for right now, they're not putting it on HBO Max like it was scheduled. And this was like a big budget move. First of all, Leslie Grace, we were going to have a Latina back girl. This is mm. why we're talking about this. Is why we're talking uh, about this. It this hurts. Movie. It um, hurts. It's pain. She was in In the Heights. Um, and who did she play? Nina? Painful. Yeah. Um, Dominicana, Nina Rosario. Mm-hmm. Dominicana, and it was a big deal. Like a dom- Dominicana bachatera. Background. Just want to say background as a bachatera, bachata artist, d- uh, born to Dominican parents. She was about to be our bad girl. So what's up? After the Goldita Chronicles, they do this. Like this is like almost well, people Brothers- saying there's a there's a conspiracy, and Rachel mentioned it um last week. Like. Is there something going on? Maybe. Well, it's a tie. It's a first of all, it's a Warner Brothers tidal wave because the Gordita Chronicles was also an HBO Max, and it's a part of this new HBO Max is combining um, with the Discovery Channel, Warner Plus, and Discovery, Warner and Discovery, and they're just they're they're joining forces, and because of that, a lot of these shows are gonna and movies are gonna get canned because they're not part of that. But it sucks that it, it's it's get, it's hitting a lot of these, uh, you know, uh, you know, Batgirl is also, um, you know, a lot of POC uh, uh, talent, even behind the camera with the two directors, mm. I think are wow. uh, middle, middle Eastern descent. Mm. And 
it, it sucks that they are caught up in this um, Warner Brothers and uh, change. Like Warner Brothers is just doing a whole, they're changing the wallpaper. They're doing a whole facelift Ooh, type of they, shit. They, yeah. And so, you know, it's take, but I don't know. I, it's, it's weird. It's weird. It's, it's, it's not normal for, uh, for you know a movie to get scrapped after it's already made i'm telling you that's crazy how much there, how much you right, how much okay. you think they spend excuse me there is an accountant running around the warner <laughs> brothers lot right now going, <laughs> somebody give me el Butyrol. they spent 90 million dollars they spent 90 million dollars i'm gonna burn these books somebody give me pepto bismol <laughs> Poor I like accounting. How, I like how people online where when they hear like that much money was spent, they're like, "Yo, but you you could have used that ninety million dollars to feed all the poor people in the world. You could have bought Dominican <laughs> Republic. You know, <laughs> you could have uh, bought the whole thing and got a side of a little truck. You could have thrown in Haiti with the deal. Throw Haiti in, I'll fix everything. That's it. Boom. I don't know how HBO, HBO Max give fuck boys their own island, but they can't give Batgirl her own movie, you know? Oh, Jamie! Because Frank, I don't know, there's a show, I don't know if you know, there's a show on HBO Max called Fuck Boy Island. Uh, oh, and shit, it looks like your background looks like you're on Fuck Boy Island right now. You have, palm, <laughs> you have palm trees and like, <laughs> and a beach. So it's like, this is what, but this is what Discovery Plus is. There are, there are a bunch of reality shows and and they're just they're going to put more reality into the HBO Max library and they're taking out this original content like Golita, like Batman, uh, Batgirl, sorry. Batgirl. Um, but Michael Keaton it was was in the Batgirl movie. Old school Michael Keaton. He actually wasted, you know, a year oh. of his life or something. Oh, my God. I didn't know that, Jamie. To be in, in this movie. And now we're not even going to see him. Uh, he's also in the Flash that. movie. He's also in the Flash movie, with Mike, which might not get released because Ezra Miller keeps getting oh, arrested. Shit, I didn't know that. Michael Keaton is in it. Yo, yeah. so on one of the earnings calls, Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslav, he was very unapologetic about the decision. And I'm going to quote what he said. OK, he said, quote, our objective is to grow the DC brand to grow the DC characters, but also our job is to protect the DC brand, he said. So what what are they protecting here? What um, went wrong? What's mumbo happening? Jumbo, like how man. bad is this movie really, really bad? Or um, mm. is there some? I mean, I don't know what I don't know what conspiracy Frank is thinking up in his brain. It could be. Frank. I mean, there's a lot going on. It's not only this. What's up with that James Franco? Uh, you know, playing Fidel Castro. Uh, that you know, John Lugosi well, I mean, came out. Completely, and, that's a whole different thing, so. right? But that's that's also part of it. I mean, there's a lot going on in one week, all pertaining to Dominicans, and and I mean, not Dominicans but Latinos. Like, it's weird. Like, I mean, major things. Like, how do you put James Franco as Fidel Castro? That's like, and that's he he got a case out there. Thank Doesn't you. Doesn't James Franco got a case? He got a case. What's <laughs> up? Like, how do you give this guy? Like, I mean, how much privilege are you? I mean, really, like. And you have uh, guy, uh, John Leguizamo speaking out about it. Oh, yeah, he's hot uh, about it. Hey, man, hey, man, I ain't got no problem with Franco, man. But, you know, man, come on, man. Um, and so Jamie, he has, we you wanted know. to come on the show. Could you I know, stop right? making fun of our friend Chill, Johnny bro. Legs? I love Johnny, Johnny Legs. Legs. We love you so much. I love Johnny Legs. I, love I Johnny liked Legs. him in Son of um, Sam, bro. He did a no, great Italian. Uh, he, he, he played a great Italian in, the, in, in that movie. So Here's people talking th shit that he was Italian. He played an Italian role. He should, he should shut up. And he was like, yo, that was like once in a blue moon. So no, what yeah. do you people... You know, exception so, to the rule, except right. to the rule. Um, there is here's the devil's advocate for for James Franco playing um this role. Allegedly, the the rest of the production is heavily Latino uh represented, right? Like with the producer, I don't know, director, other actors, the crew. Um, and and so you know, I think in this particular situation, this is I feel I think this is a low budget movie. And I think they're they thought that they can get someone who's known for and now Franco, since he is kind of semi canceled, right? You could get him at a low low price. Right. <laughs> get him it at was a low low price. <laughs> and by the way, price, it, it was the producer's uh, Latino, by the way, which yeah, which, that's what I'm which, saying. Which, right. Oh, man. Well, I, so I think there's a it's the, the the crew and and the and and some of the the other actors are Latino. They probably thought they could get away with 
you know, getting a name. Um, and even though it's not a Latino name, it's a name that's going to get their movies seen. And if they're a low budget movie, um, and I think that's where their head is at, but they had to have known that the optics of this would get this sort of reaction. Right. I feel like the producer like lashed out at, at, at like was almost saying he doesn't know what he's talking about, but I don't know. Like, how do you not know that the optics of this look bad? You know, um, hmm. if you're going to do this and be like, F the criticism, I'm doing it my way. Fine. But if you're going to do this and be like, you guys are wrong and you guys don't know the real story. No, I mean, you're gonna, this is controversial. Like this is like, again, we don't, I think this goes back to us needing more A-list actors in the Latino community. Right. Obviously there's not an, you know, if you're a, if he's, if the producer of this movie is asking like Guazamo or, you know, people want um, this actor now who was in the Mandalorian. Uh, um, I'll look us up his name a little bit. Um, or if they're looking at, you know, Oscar Isaac or somebody like that. And those guys obviously are not going to say they're not available for this low budget film. And James Franco's like over here, like, hey, I'm half Portuguese. Mm. I could do this. Which is not uh, Latino, by the <laughs> way. Not Latino. I mean, oh, God. Yeah. And you know what they're saying? But Latin is spoken in Portugal. Get out of here right, with that. Exactly. What is this? Yeah. But that's the carrot that 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 uh, Franco is dangling. It's like, oh, shit, like. This is this little movie of ours can get a James Franco. Hmm. And when is that normally going to happen? He kind of looks like Fidel. Um, that's their thinking. That's their devil's advocate. I'm obviously still on the side of like, find the star, find the new Latino star. If the, if the ones that are out there and there's not a lot are saying no, um, groom one yourself and try to find, you know, try to find someone who's going to make a star making performance. But you know what? I, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be quiet. You know why? Because recently, right now, they took two Mexicans and they put them in that new Wakanda film, and I think a, a Guatemalan girl too. So I think we're making inroads in certain places. So I'm gonna stay quiet. I'm gonna be like, I'm not happy, but I'm seeing that we're making moves on other, on some other end. So I'm just gonna keep it on on the lower. Um, you know that that's a great thing. There's on that new Wakanda film coming out in in, in November. Yeah, so. and one of them is playing Namor. No more the Submariner, who is like a really popular right, right, uh, uh, comic book for, yeah, for the comic book heads out there. He's he's a, a, a really popular Marvel superhero, and so right, you got a Mexican playing him. It's like okay, we got ourselves, we're losing a bad girl, but we're gaining a right a, a Namor. Uh, <laughs> right, that's why I'm 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 looking at the whole spectrum. So I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna be. I'm. 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 I'm gonna keep. I'm. Gonna, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it calm. You know. I'm gonna be calm on this one. I'm. I'm surprised you're calm. As you can see, my blood is boiling. It's just like really, you can't find a real Latino actor to play one of the most famous Latino that's figures. That's true, and in, political figure too. Like, are you? That's that's you know, that's 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 a slap in the face. But also, here's the like marketing POV, if you will. It would do so much better among our community who yeah, over index damn, at the movie theaters. Facts. If you were to just get a Latino to play it, to to speak more to the authenticity, you would keep us engaged. You would get us to the movie theater and hmm. you would keep us engaged. And now with James Franco attached to it. Well, this you doesn't set sound, yourselves up from from Jump Street. This doesn't sound like a movie theater type. This looks like a straight to like. You know, straight to uh, VHS, straight whatever to we over index in <laughs> entertainment, Jamie, whether we're going to the movie theater or streaming, we are over consumers, the so, Latino segment. So, so can I ask you guys a question? What's the what's what's the solution to this that we cancel it, that we don't watch it if they do come out with this? Like, how do we control this? Like, what do we do as Latinos? What, what do you guys recommend? I mean, I think what, what, what basically people are like, what like Guzama is doing now, like you have to talk, you have, this is a conversation, right? This is a conversation right. that anytime it happens and it keeps happening and we're in 2022, um, it, people need to speak out and people like, like Guzama need to speak out, not just like your friends on Facebook, like mm. all, you know, where are the other actors right now? Where are the other Latino actors? You don't have, you know, it's not about being like this, uh, you know, <laughs> I think it's just about it's not about like going on strike or something. Right. It's more about, yo, let's have this conversation like really like we need to start making, you know, hiring Latino actors. And if we don't have enough stars, we need to make these stars. We need to yeah. put people in projects so they can shine because right. we do have a lot of the same kind of, 
you know, our, our A-listers and B-listers are kind of the same revolving door, right. you know, not that they're bad, but it is kind of the same people we see all the time. And look at, and then, so this goes back to Batgirl. Leslie Grace could have continued her upward trajectory to be like a star. And look, she gets slammed her, she gets the bat door, the bat door slammed in her face. <laughs> she gets locked out of the bat cave. Damn, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, hey, man. man. Hey, hey. And, there's, and, more, and there's been so many bad superhero films. I don't know how, like I'm saying, I don't know how bad this movie had to be when Morbius was, re was released twice. Oh my and, God. And that movie, uh, you know, critics and everyone else said that was, you know, really bad, you know, like, like Jared Leto and his fucking vampire abs were horrible. <laughs> and so how, how, how is, how bad could bad girl have been? It couldn't have been as bad as Morbius, you know? And I, I still think that um, it's going to be released sometime somewhere. Oh, in the wow. And, hope, um, hope, hope, hope. Let's maybe, see. Uh, Keep hope alive. Maybe. But yeah, this is this is this is where we are in Hollywood with Latinos. We're just and taking some hits right now. You know, we're taking some hits. I agree with Jamie. I think that the conversation is it, tan sendido. So I don't know if we have a resolution that we could just be like, all right, guys, we're going to meet at Union Square. We're going to rally. We're going to get all the casting offices. I, you know, like I don't hmm. know to like like what we could really, you know, how do I? I Let's keep working. We're making noise. Yeah. I'm not, making noise. I'm not good with protests, though. I, I usually it's too many people. Oh yeah, that <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Scrap and that. then all of a sudden, I don't know. Like we're like, oh, we're walking the Brooklyn Bridge since when? <laughs> now I'm, I'm now I'm protesting. The, now I'm protesting the protest route. I'm like, why are we walking this bridge? I thought we were just gonna stay in Union Square for a little bit. Oh, that sounds like a bad a bad cycle. Um, <laughs> let's just avoid that whole idea. Frank, I don't know what the like <laughs> resolution is, but I do know Jamie is absolutely right. Keep the conversations popping, you know, Facts. and let's talk to everybody. We could talk to each other. That's great. But let's also talk to the people outside of our circles and cultures and let them know. I guess it's just up to us to keep educating and also to keep producing the content. And I really I'm going to ask because I know that there are certain decision makers that listen to our podcast. And I'm talking to you, decision mm. makers. Ooh. Hi, knock, knock. Who's there? Can Ooh. you build more incubator programs? Can you build more incubator programs? Who can you build more incubator programs so that we can create this arsenal of talent that really needs to lead the future and depict us in the media and how we Ooh. really are and authentically? I know that was a long <sighs> knock, knock joke. I'm not oh, a good wow. knock, knock joke writer. Wow. Um, wow. I don't know I if you should tell that. I don't know if you tell that to uh, to your kids. That's no. a black, black joke. Oh, you could probably darn. leave. Yeah. You Workshopping leave stuff here. I just workshop <laughs> stuff here. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But yeah, that's I guess my knock knock joke. It's like, hey, help us. We need more programs, incubator programs, connect us to the executives. Let Latinos learn how and we will get there. But we gotta learn how. And those hmm. that know how to teach us, like, can you just teach more? open up like there's there's i open know them doors trying. yo open up Go. open up the gate the Both gatekeepers open up the doors yo Decision let's go makers. Yeah. come on let's do more all right um we're gonna keep fighting the fight but we are talking to somebody today here on the episode who represents for us pretty well and on a new show at that on Ooh. amazon prime KK. yeah yo we are talking to one of the contestants on Amazon's new show, Cosmic Love, that comes out on August 12th. Her name is Maria Rodriguez, mm. and she's a Capricorn. And you guys, I think we should get into it right now. Let's do Let's it. Do it. Great. Let's go. All right, you guys. All right, you guys. This is the part of the show where we interview someone amazing. Mm. <laughs> Oh, she's amazing. Okay, I cannot wait. Please put your hands together for one of the contestants on a new show called Cosmic Love coming out on Amazon Studios Prime Video. Please put your hands together for Maria Rodriguez. Yeah. Maria, Hi. Maria. 
it's coming. I knew that was coming. <laughs> Maria, get ready for a lot of Maria references. I'm sure you've heard them all. Maybe tonight you'll hear some new ones here because Jamie, yes, Jamie's pretty witty. Give me some new ones. Give me some old school ones. I, love uh, new ones. I could have gone West Side Story, but I felt like that might be like too old school. But okay. yeah, bueno, Steven Spielberg. Maybe she saw it. There was a remake. The, the remake, you know. Yeah. All right, guys. First of all, I got to kick things off by saying Maria Rodriguez is from New York City. Sitting. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right. NYC. Where are you repping, Mija? Oh my God, I am from Brooklyn, New York. Oh, oh snap, Rachel! It's you... Brooklyn in the house without, without a, a doubt. doubt. You got in. You and Rachel <laughs> now. Y'all right? know about Brooklyn? Let's find out. Yo, oh okay, snap! Okay. I know about the Jackie Robinson into Borough, okay? But I'm on the other side. I'm from Sheepshead Bay. But oh, call up alone. Where we from? Brooklyn, son. <laughs> okay, we from Brooklyn. I love you already. And and not only that, there's some more common threads here. Listen to this amazing cultural pattern that we're all a part of. She's Dominican Puerto Rican. Ay, Ooh. mi madre. Pa que tú lo sepa. Eh, <laughs> que bon bon. Uh, it's a combination of Brugal y Pesicola. Oh, de botella. Pero, Maria, wait, so, wait Maria, so do you have more family members? Like, uh, from what side do you have like more family members from Guys, in the city? The story is, y'all ready? Okay, yeah. yes. Mm. My parents are Dominican. I was born in Puerto Rico. Just oh, me. No okay. brothers, no sisters, no, no abuelita. And then I was raised in New York since I was two months as a baby. Oh, wow. So, yo lo tengo todo junto. Mi, yeah. mi cultura y como me criaron, like how I was raised, is Dominican, right? I got the New York in me because I went to school here, you know, my friends, everything. And then I have Puerto Rican culture because I went there when I was in high school and I went to school there for like two years. But I rep it because a lot of times when I was growing up, people would try to tell me, oh, no, you're this. Oh, no, you were born here. You're this. Your parents are from here. You're this. And now I'm like, I'm everything. I'm Puerto All Rican. Right. And I'm from New York. Oof. Well, okay. Well, and you lost. You lost your month. Your you must have had an accent at two months when you came here. So I don't. Uh, I don't hear an accent, accent anymore. Yeah, it's, you had your two month well, you baby accent. My mom, she speaks Spanish completely. If fluent, you know. So when I went to school, I learned English, but I was at home. I'm speaking Spanish. Um, that's how Spanish. it is. Yeah. Like I don't really speak that British Spanish, but my parents always talk to me in, in Spanish. But and you I guys answer them in know. English. You go, you guys know, like those are tools. Those are such great tools that we have. Not everybody can say they're bilingual. We, I think we're trilingual because we know Spanish, English, and Espanglish, which is a language in and of its own. You know what I mean? But, but like, I think that's really fascinating. Now, I want to talk about cosmic love. It's so funny because, like, okay, as Latinos, I think we love the zodiac. We love señales. We love, oh, like, man. you know, the universe. Like, that's just how we're. Puerto Mercado. Right? Los like Santos. Los Santos. Oh my God. Don't, don't get Rachel started, please. Well, okay. I have to say, because every textbook definition of a Leo, that's me. I'm a textbook Leo, female Leo. So today's Lion's Gate, the Lion Gate portal is today 8 8. Okay. So where do I have to go? What do I have to do? Buy a lotto ticket? It's a, a, it's a, a, it's a wall? What do I Today do? we're recording is 8 8. There's a big portal that's open today. Oh, wow. oh, it's called I, the Lions is, Gate is Portal. Is it near an A train? Because I don't know if I if I, I want to go too <laughs> it's far. It's too hot. It's portal. too hot to go on the A train. No, uh, no, I'm not taking the A train today. It's too hot <laughs> in New York City. Wait, so when they sent us Maria's background of materials, it starts off with Capricornia, like Capricorn. Capricorn. She, Maria Rodriguez, Capricorn. And you're on this show, Cosmic Love. We want to hear about your experience. It's coming out on August 12th, so... We all know you're not going to share all the juicy details, but give us a glimpse into the production and, and shooting of that show. Okay, so, well, the, the show is based on four elements because you guys know astrology is based on four elements. So there is the fire, there is the air, there is the um, water, and then there's me, Earth. And right. then there are 16 contestants that get matched with us by the stars, based on our charts, based on the time we were born, based on our houses, based on our personalities, like based on our astrological chart. And they're there to meet us, right? And then as we're dating them and we're being guided by the astral chamber, which is the stars and everything that has to do with astrology, we get to, you know, get to know people and actually kind of 
battle a little bit with something that we will not usually date in the outside world or not usually do in the outside world. So that's where the kind of like the debate starts because maybe I would do things like this or I would look, I would go after someone like this, but the stars is not saying to go after that person. So am I going to listen to the stars or am I going to go for after what I usually do? Am I mm. a believer in the stars or am I not a believer in the star? You know, I'm a Capricorn, so I'm always like hands on. I want to know. I need to know. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to... um Tell the people that's telling me what what to do, what to do. So that's kind of like my <laughs> battle in the whole experience because I am a very true Capricorn woman. Like I'm very mm. like have a plan. I have a discipline. I want to know what I'm doing, where I'm going, what time, what I need to wear. And in this experience, it was based on the stars. So Maria, what sign is your match then? A Who's your match? Matches. I have Ooh. a lot of matches. Okay. <laughs> okay. So okay, okay so what, what's who's not people, your match? Who's not your match? Fire and Earth, like me, Earth. Believe it or not, we match like with with our own element. But no specific fire. sign, not a Cancer, not a Taurus, not a Aquarius. Yeah, so or... basically, like fire, it's like Leo, Sag, and then like Earth are like Virgos, Taurus. Like, have have you ever dated someone who was one of the signs that that you're not, you know, you shouldn't link up with, and and. Was the results kind of what you expected? Like, oh, this shit, this shit ain't gonna work out. We are not on well, the same astrological level. Hmm. Well, honestly, guys, I dated guys that I wasn't compatible all my life. Because before the show, <laughs> I didn't even know who I was compatible with. You know, I'm not an astral guru. Like, I don't know anything about astrology that much. Even now, after the show, like, I still have to go and read things. And I think that uh. is the beauty of it. And I think that's why, you know, us, the elements, fit so well into this, you know, experience. Because you also don't want somebody that knows everything about the chart and be like, you know what, I'm not dating this one because... I already know what this brings. So I think that is like the beauty of it. So yes, absolutely. I definitely dated people that I am not compatible with. And looking back, I put two and two together and I'm like, girl, you have lost your mind. Like, <laughs> wow. Well, so you guys got to stay at this fly ass house, right? <laughs> Tell us about where you were and what you did. Like, were you put together you were set up like to do these tasks together give us a sneak peek into those activities so first of all i want to say they took real good care of me but i will say this you know i had to give them my little pujita here and there like when they were interviewing me i was like you know I would love the big room because I do a lot of looks, you know, just saying. <laughs> okay. So that helped me. But no, honestly, it was so um, beautiful, especially for me coming from where I come from. I'm from New York. I'm from Dominican Republic, from Umbario, Ooh. where women like me don't get these opportunities. Mm -hmm. And this is a beautiful thing to experience and to see and to be able to actually share with my culture and the little girls that are going to look up to me and one day want to be in my positions. You know, I grew up watching Sabalo Gigante, wanted to be one of those girls, wanted to be on TV. And this is a very important moment, not for me, but for my culture. You know, is it Dominican? Uh, hi. I probably am the number six Dominicana on reality TV on a platform, Ameri Americano from Amazon Prime Video. And that is a celebration on its own. So being there was absolutely a dream come true every day, waking up and knowing that people want my face and my personality in front of this camera and that they love it and they believe in it. And all of that was, you know, was there to make me great and i think that is a beautiful thing to share with you know our culture yo right. thank you for breaking it down yeah. like that miha but like yes you're you're carrying that flag so proud thank you for doing that for us i cannot wait to watch this show and you know what we need you right now we need you because we're at a time right now where some of us are you know those shows are getting canceled and we're feeling a certain way about our representation mm -hmm. in media right now. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to always hold that bandera. You know what I'm saying? Not literally, but obviously, figuratively, and, and weave you. it into your craft. Now, talking about your craft, um, hold on. So you were on this show. I'm trying <laughs> to like, you see me, I'm trying to get some nuggets. I'm She's like, you Marie, clawing, I, you clawing. Please. She's so good, though. You could tell she's so good. Wait, where could you tell us where you were? Where was the house? Yes, I can tell you where I, where I was. Okay. Um, I was in Malibu. Malibu. Ooh, okay. All right. Yeah. Initially, oh, yeah. we were supposed to be. Oh, did I share it? Yeah, I think I shared it. Initially, we were supposed to be in Hawaii, but you know, COVID has changed our whole uh, world, so a lot of things cannot happen how we would have wanted to. But 
listen, I couldn't ask for more. It was beautiful. That's a good that, but that you know, if you're gonna switch from Hawaii, Malibu is a good second choice. It's not like it went from like Hawaii to like Orchard Beach. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been like, damn, man. Yo, how long did we consider real quick? How did our budget okay? go so low? What? <laughs> and and I Maria got all like, look for Hawaii. Like, come on now. <laughs> I think a and lot Maria of people would drop out. Was after a while, you know, with reality TV, like you know, there's cameras on you. Like, did you just become used to the cameras on you after a while? Or is it still something that, you know, you always kind of know, kind of know that it's there? Uh, you know what I'm um, saying? It I think one of the things that I got the most comfortable was being in my room and having cameras. I, I think my producers was like, Maria, like, do you not remember <laughs> this camera? I'm becoming forced that. I don't know what am I going to do? You know, I, I'm very you know, if you know about reality TV, everything moves fast. You got a time frame. There's money being spent every money, every second, every minute. And listen, at one point, I didn't even remember they were there. I was just like, listen, look at that. That's when the I best TV. Right? You're like, That's you are the uh, you TV. are the Beyonce song right now. Comfortable in my skin, cozy with who I am. You know that album is on blast right now through my veins. Okay, wow. <laughs> so you are a professional makeup artist. Yes. You, you, like you have a great, well, tell us about your career as a makeup artist. And I'd like to know how you stumbled upon this opportunity to be on Cosmic Love. Okay. So I've been a makeup artist for over 10 years, guys. Get it. Ooh, okay. Get it. I got you. I got the woman that will say that though, like a jacket and makeup. It's it's amazing for me. I feel so proud. You know, I started when I was 18 years old. I started right. as a cashier in Sephora. I fell in love mm. with makeup since I was a baby. I wear mommy tacones, mommy blusa, mommy pinta labio, and that was in me. You know, I was very agentaita to, you know, to an extent. And, you know, I my mom never, like, closed me out of doing these things she always let me be myself so I got a little job at Sephora when I was 18 as a cashier and I will beg my managers like please put me on the floor please I'll clean all the staff rooms I organize every lipstick they're like Maria okay and then as I did that I got to learn and take classes of makeup with the actual brands like big big brands now that were baby at the time when I was like mm. you know coming into makeup Urban Decay Anastasia Beverly Hills Oh, I can mention so many. And then Ooh. I took makeup as my career. I literally sat mommy down. I said, mommy, I see a, a, a world for me in this. I want to do this. I don't want to go to college. Y'all already know, mommy's Dominicana. Mira, muchacha. And I kept showing her as I um kept looking for better jobs and better promotions. I went into Bloomingdale's. Then after Bloomingdale's, I got promoted right. to um Benefit Cosmetic. Then I got promoted to Anastasia Beverly Hills. Love. Then I got promoted to NARS First Store in Macy's. Then I got major was the, brands. Yes. Then I was the Trish McAvoy original makeup artist having over 40 stores in New York City at the age of 23 years old, getting mm. paid over 60K a year. Go ahead and flex. Go ahead and flex on this. Go ahead and flex. Somebody, somebody, let her give us some oil or something and let her flex. Cut <laughs> your ass off right I, now. I, Go ahead. Hard and after that, when I when I work with Trish, I realized, hey, I can have my own business in my country in the Dominican Republic because my country is very limited when it comes to sources and makeup and um anything you see on social media is not easy to find like Chanel and all these amazing brands and. I decided I wanted to be the plug. I wanted to oh, be that person. Oh my lord! La connect. She got and all my la connect, and I became the real connect. La connexion. I opened my own business called M Beauty Party, guys, and I supply, yeah. um, you know, the stores in my country. And after that, pandemic hit. You know, I was mm. in New York trying to get inventory, and pandemic hit, and I um decided that I wanted to get from behind the camera. You know, I always get asked, are you a model? Are you a model? Do you model? Like, do you model? And I never thought about it. And I just started taking pictures with my photographer friends. I did a little casting app thing of like portfolios and they reached out to me for another show. That ain't happening. Get it. And then they reached out to me for this show. And when they reached out to me, como dice uno, yo lo sentí ahí. I knew Ay. it. I felt that and I was like, this is the one. This is the one. And I have dedicated almost a year and a half of my life to this show. And this is why I'm so 
proud of it and I'm so excited for everybody to see it because it comes with with such a you know it's not like I always wanted to be in TV but I knew that I was meant for, to do something you know to yeah. be in front of cameras I just never knew how and I think this is the perfect opportunity, you know, to put my coach out there, put myself out there and some fine love too. So that's mm. my whole story, guys. There you have it. <laughs> did you find wow. did you find did you find love on the show? Well, I found uh, so but... much love. I found so uh... much love. <laughs> all right but I, I thought that was like a like a spoiler like she can't really tell you no, I yeah. it comes <laughs> up, guys. It's so many different levels guys uh, levels like, yeah it's so it's so many different levels you know we connect in in sisterhood you, you have new friendships you uh. have a bond you know there's the elements there's, there's also the contestants then there's all of us together like you guys don't want to miss out in all the type of love that this show mm. has because there's a lot of self-reflection, a lot of self-love, especially for me, I feel like as a woman coming again for where I come from. I'm an Afro-Latina, I represent a lot mm. of women and that's that's the type of love we want to see on TV. So absolutely. Wow. Well, let me yeah. let me ask about this love real quick because I saw something in the trailer with you, Maria Ooh. Rodriguez, that actually is, a, 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 you know what, you reality TV. <laughs> it's like, oh, what does that mean? Somebody gets proposed to on the show because in the trailer, a ring comes out, and I'm not sure if that's what? from Mar Yeah, Frank, watch the... You, I'm yo, not sure if it's for Maria. The she's stars aligned. The stars aligned for somebody. She's not going to tell oh, us. I know she's not going to tell us if that was oh, her yo. ring or not. But I'm like, wait a minute. Are we talking to the girl that gets proposed to on the show right now? What? Rachel, oh. you can't. This is spoiler stuff. Okay, but I'm just saying, watch the trailer. I'm really excited. I need Rachel, to know. Rachel, I'm getting, I'm getting disappointed because if you watch that trailer, there was so much more you could have caught on that trailer. Oh, oh, no. oh shit. Find <laughs> <laughs> that ring. Oh, mm. snap. Oh, snap. <laughs> oh, but man. You, Okay, all right. So can you elaborate at all about what was in that trailer? Are you well, allowed number, to... Well, can I make a little game with you first? Yes. Ooh. How many times do you think you saw me on the trailer? A you lot. You got one answer. A lot. How many? Okay, okay I'm going to eat. give an estimation of... Because your hair was different, right? You had curly and straight. You look so beautiful. I mean, you're very, very beautiful. I see why people think you're a model. And you have such a cute smile. You're adorable. Okay. <laughs> and Frank, you're people always smile. people always ask Frank too, like if he's a model. So he <laughs> they, he, he totally <laughs> like you know, yeah. Oh. You still he relates. Though. He relates. To me. <laughs> oh, like a like a head model. Like maybe yeah. the head could be used for like hat wear. Men's um, warehouse, you know. Okay, I think I saw you. I love this game because now you're making me think. Were you two different people? No, wait. I think I was I saw like you. three people in this trailer. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Oh. You had your hair different, so I think I saw you in that trailer at least. I mean, seven, seven times, eight wow. times. <sighs> okay. What about More? you, Frank? Did you watch the trailer, Frank? No, I, I, I didn't, and I was I, looking, I, I, I was I, looking I, for I, you. I, There's so many Maria Rodriguez's on IG, and I was like looking through, Mar but I, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I, but I, I, I went into your show and I, I saw the whole astrology, th astrology thing, and it's so interesting. It's just um, how many Rodriguez, Maria Rodriguez? Oh my God, in I couldn't find you. Alone in my phone alone, there's like thirteen. Right, exactly. Well, so, but esta uh, es la única, esta es la única Maria Rodriguez Capricorn. And she's unique. <laughs> yeah, Maria Rodriguez Capricorn, you're the first one that pops up. So, <laughs> it, you know. Um, wait, Maria, w w did you have any, like, reality shows growing up that you used to... Because I, I I had a, a, a Bachelor and Bachelorette phase. I was... Oh, I was real watching, bad. I, but I used go. to really only watch, like, the first, you know, the episodes when they first come out and meet people and then watch the last episode and then maybe a couple of minutes. I didn't... I couldn't watch a whole season, but I was really like into that. That was my reality show. Like, did you have any kind of go to reality shows when you were younger? Mm. You don't want me to tell you the reality shows I watch. I watch. <laughs> oh. I watch Flavor Flav. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's one of my favorites. I love it. <laughs> no, I watch Jersey Shore. Like, I don't know. I used to watch the ones Jersey that they Shore. were fighting, guys. Of course. But <laughs> All right. those were the times that I was growing up. Those were the ones that were popular at the time, you know, like, Flavor Flav, like I never really watched like the Bachelor, Bachelor, what is it? Bachelor, 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 Bachel
the Spanish version of it on like Day the Moon Doll. And my mom would not let me watch it. And I would like go <laughs> to the living room with my sister and turn on the TV and turn it all the way low uh-huh. until my abuela came out and be like, mira, muchacha, vaya a secundar. <laughs> and I would run to my bed, but that's about it. <laughs> um, well, let me ask you, your mommy must be very proud because you are the CEO also of a company, your own oh, beauty, mom. beauty company. So, wow. I mean, I'm I'm proud to have read that. So could you tell us a little bit about M Beauty Party? So M Beauty Party is basically a wholesale distributing company in Dominican Republic, where we basically supply all of our makeup stores all over the country. And now I'm doing something really special with it for the extension of the show. And I'm creating what it is, my own accessory line. And yes. that's going to be Ooh. part of M Beauty Party. And that's going to be a combination of my styles on the show, the things that I wear the most, um, bags, like little dresses that I wear, um, I wear a lot of like mesh gloves, um, tops with like high gloves on the green screen. And a lot of the, I want to say, yeah, Amazon loved it. And I created this collection. I just based on my personality on the show. And that's going to be now part of M Beauty Party too. So it just basically like beauty and everything that has to do with beauty that represents me. I feel like I'm like the face of my brand and I don't like limit myself. That's why I have like the wholesale distributing company. Now I'm going to connect it with the clothing line. And as I grow, I wanted to kind of keep growing in different ways. And who knows, in the future, I might have my own makeup line. Who knows? Hey. So wow. Oh, you know? Definitely after this. I think, wow. you know. <laughs> Um, Thanks uh, for the clarity on that. Right? Maria, we're, 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 we're close to wrapping up, uh, but we want you to give us that, that, give us one more kind of pitch for why people should check out Cosmic Love. So, um, people should watch what people should watch Cosmic Love because not only is it based on astrology, is the number one show that's even made about astrology. Um, you're going to be able to connect with different people based on your sign, your culture, where you're from, your experiences, and your dreams and goals. You're going to see people, um, in different ages that believe in love, but believe in themselves to even put themselves in a predicament to do this. And I, I feel like a lot of people can connect after the pandemic that we've been afraid of doing things and, you know, putting ourselves out there and trying something new. And this is a perfect example of if you try something new, if you get, you know, if you get out of your comfort zone and you follow a new dream or a new goal, you might find something beautiful. And that's something that for me, I, want to give to the audience. I believe in something I've never done before. I left my family. I left my businesses. I left my comfort zone to do this. And I want you guys to experience this. I want you guys to learn from this. And I want you guys to connect with us. And maybe, you know, this is going to help others to believe in astrology or believe in love or believe in your dreams and believe in other things that this show might help you, you know, not only about astrology, a lot of different angles. Um, look, I, I, as someone who's not well versed in astrology, like, I, but I always get since I'm a Gemini, I always get the oh, you a Gemini? My ex was a Gemini. Okay, <laughs> so I don't even want to. So I always get. I'm always like, wait, why? What does this mean? And I'm I'm lost. But I feel like I'm gonna learn a lot also about astrology through this show. Um, yes, we have know. some yeah. amazing Geminis on that yeah. show. Okay, I'm, yeah. I'm Team Gemini. I'm gonna be rooting for Team. I'm gonna be rooting for you. And I'll be rooting for Team Gemini as well. You and guys. they're very close to my heart, so. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I... This Zodiac yeah. thing is so real. Like, okay, I'm not trying to say <laughs> that I over, you know, you know, whatever. But like, yeah, I asked my doctors, hey, Gyno, what, what sign are you? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I need to. <laughs> I need to know down to the gynecologist what kind really? of sign they are. Yes, I, it's Holy very important. Smack. Okay, very important. Wow. So would you but, just get off, get out the stir, you get off of the stirrups if it's just the wrong <laughs> sign? You're like, I'm out. I'm sorry. We don't even make it that far. What we have to if he's a Scorpio. Ooh. He's not coming near this. That's, boat, yeah, that, yeah, that's spicy. Coming, get your claws <laughs> out of here. Get your nasty ass claws, your paws, and your speculum out of here. That shit. No. Scorpio, no. We're talking about it. I was like, which one is going to get that reaction? Pay that, Scorpio. I... Yeah, you got it. You uh, hit a nerve. 
You, you <laughs> triggered oh. something in her right now. Um, God, Ma- Maria, I want I want to see this show now because I just want to see what happens to you. Like, I I, I want to see where you, where this adventure takes you because like just talking to you now, now I'm invested. I'm like, oh, and she got invested. me. Yeah, she got me crazy. Want, and whoever is listening, I'm sure is gonna be personally invested. Oh, we yeah. want to see what happens in your journey through this show. All right. Oh, yes, yeah. Maria, I got yes, one more. I, I got one more question. I know you're a Capricorn. Can you give me the date that you're born on? Oh my God. Yo no soy brujo tampoco. December 30th, 19. December 30th. Oh my yeah. god. My mom dijo que yo nací a la misma 12 del día y por eso que era malísima cuando chiquita. Uh, <laughs> ay. Que era caliente. Que uh, estaba caliente. Uh, picante. Uh, December okay. 30th, right before the Wow. Uf. Yeah, and don't give me and don't not give me a Christmas and birthday gift together. <laughs> nah, nah. That's a no no. Yeah, I'm nah. sorry if you had to experience that. That's a no no. That's Girl, not oh fair. My God. Now I'm grown. Now I'm like, uh, come on now. I, I <laughs> yeah. threat. It's, ha- it's, it's hard. It's hard. Birthday. It's how it's hard to have you as a girlfriend. You know, oh, <laughs> birthday dear. gift. You know, Christmas gift. It's not easy. Um, Ay, can, I, can I ask a question? Are you single, Maria? Oof. Right now, I didn't want to ask Rachel. I didn't want to. Guys, you don't have to out. answer okay, if okay. you don't feel comfortable. This is, this is when I have to use the amazing, um, you know, the amazing marketing training that Amazon used. You're gonna have to watch. Oof. The show. <laughs> I love Ooh. it. I think Rachel set it up for you just so we can have that <laughs> cliffhanger. I mean, it's like, look, she ain't gonna tell you how it how, what the outcome is. You know, I'm to just watch. hacking her present status, but she is good. You guys hey. watch Maria Rodriguez on Cosmic Love on Amazon Prime Studios on August 12th. Congratulations, Felicidades. We're so proud Gracias, of you. Mommy. Yeah, we can't wait to watch you, and we Thank hope you'll you come back. We want to talk to you more because this is. Please, I had so much fun. This is yeah. so much fun. Wait, espérate, ven acá. Tell everybody where to follow you. Yeah. Like Instagram. Um, yeah, there's a hundred. There's a hundred Marias. Can you, Maria Rodriguez? Okay, can you I'm give me please? <laughs> I'm gonna make it easy, Frank. If you put cosmic love, you're gonna see my thing right away pop up. All right. If you all right. Put on, on the search, but for people that are looking for me, my name on Instagram is X Maria's Beauty Parties. The same name of my company with an X. S after Maria's beauty party. And then right. there you guys can follow me and see all of my content and keep up with my life. And I'll follow you guys back. Yeah. Right. Gracias, Maria. Okay, guys. Yes. Wow. Maria, I got to see the show. I cannot wait. That was Frank, so funny. Uh, you were a fan of Maria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, I mean, like Rachel said, beautiful young lady. Uh, I don't know if I'm, I think I'm a little too old for her, but um, I can't wait for the show. Um, she's, she's a Capricorn. Great. I don't know if I mix with her, by the way, too. I'm an Aquarius. She's a Capricorn. Yo, that's I dangerous with these yeah, signs that's nowadays. A, that's a time bomb, yeah. It's just, conf- it's like confused. It's like now, I mean, she actually seemed like she wasn't as strict with it um, right. in her everyday dating life, but I mean, except on the show, but like, um, but there are some people that are like, they need that in the bio. They need that in your, yeah. your Tinder bio. You need to say, what I've is had, your astrology sign? I've had I, girls I like to... dump me like, yo, you what? On what date? You're out of here. Like, That's I don't even want to. That's my wanna... sister, yo. Yes. Yo, I, why is that? Why do girls do that? Like, I've had like connections with certain girls and it's like, yo, I told them when I was born and it's like, yo, it breaks up. And I'm like, yo, give it a chance. Like. Are there really people that really believe in that, like to that extent? Yeah. Absolutely. And I also think it's not only based on like things that we read or they read, but experience in like dating certain signs. Like, I mean, I don't know if you date enough Capricorns and you see that it's not a mix and the books are telling you it's not a mix, you're going to be like, oh, no, why am I wasting my time? I'm 40. Good night. It's been real. Bye. <laughs> But what if you like, feel that connection with someone and but your signs don't don't you know align and you really feel like a love connection there? Do you not follow your instinct and you know go maybe, with the go with the stars, so to speak? Maybe cosmic love will answer those questions. Ooh, Ooh, what are you, yeah! you an Amazon marketing team? What are you a marketer for Amazon? Maybe, like, what are you, you gotta, like maybe you just gotta check it out on Amazon, bro. yo, for yeah. real, yo. <laughs> Uh, I hear it comes out on August 12th, Jamie. So uh, let's see. Uh, Amazon be listening. Literally. That was an ad right there. <laughs> we be writing ads on this show. For real. 
I'm a, yo, yo, I need, they need to cash a check for you guys, yo. What? <laughs> yeah, no, for real, man. Well, oh, it's shit. fun. It's fun. It's fun. It's all fun. <laughs> that was so fun. Uh, best of luck to Maria. I can't wait to see what happens to her on the show. This is juicy. Yeah. This hmm. is juicy fun, right? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. All right, wow. guys. Um, also, so... also some juicy. Also juicy is Arquero Quez, right? Oh, oh yes. Good oh, segue. Yeah. I didn't have one, so I'm so glad. So uh, glad they're dripping with through. juice. Wait, that sounds gross. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> can okay. Can okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but I want to let me go first because I want to give a massive shout out. All right, right. to the crew right. at Yero.com. The lifestyle and news platform for Latino men. Mm. Um, and this week they're taking a closer look at why Hollywood is seemingly kicking Latin talent and programs to the curb. We were just talking about this Jeez. Um, and they're going to have their take on it. So get the whole story and tell them what you think at Yero.com. All right. All this right. is going. This story is going around everywhere. So this this All is the right. time to talk about it. And um, follow me at Jay Ferns uh, Instagram, J underscore Ferns Twitter. And that's that for me. So what about right. you, Rachel? Very good. Thank you so much, Jamie, for passing the mic this way. I'd love everyone to follow me. Give me a follow. F O L L O W at <laughs> Rachel La Loca. Uh, R A C H E L La Loca. Lots going on this summer on Instagram. Um, you know, not much going on though in the event space. Birthday's coming up, gonna chill a little bit, you know what I mean? Um, right. but yeah, give me a follow and let's talk. I uh, hope you're enjoying your summer, you know, as we close up the season. I always get a little sentimental, but um it'll be all right. It'll be all right. We'll, we'll, we'll just, get through. I, it's, I know it's just a few weeks off, you guys, but I'm just like, you know, like, yeah. what do I what do I do on Monday nights now? Like, it feels I, like when you were in school and, you you know, you were going on summer break and, you know, kind of kind of get a little motion. You were going to see, you know, your classmates or what have you. So I, I understand. I'll be OK. I just I'll take up a new hobby. Maybe I hmm. will buy those little craft sticks and build forts. <laughs> wow. <laughs> or, <laughs> oh, no. You're going to do like scrapbooking or something like that? I don't know, Jamie. What are you going to do on Monday nights? <laughs> huh? I probably, uh, I don't know. Because like, it's like Monday is just one of those days, right? Like you, you, you usually kind of just lazy on Mondays, so... Like the the show actually forces me to do something. If 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 I'm left alone on a Monday, it's it's me eating you know um, hot pockets in my underwear, watching you know <laughs> Netflix or something like that. You know what I mean? So what a visual! I might I might gain some weight. I might gain some extra weight during this time. I heard I heard lanyards are back, so I'm gonna go to the arts and crafts store and maybe buy <laughs> lanyards. The Chinese staircase and the box stitch. I remember that stuff. Um, there's also some home like repairs that I should probably do more so than the lanyards or the, the glue sticks, the craft sticks. Um, craft I'll macaroni figure it out. sticks. I was thinking of gluing a bunch of the leftover goldfish that are stale. You know, we buy the Costco size, but the kids only eat like a third of it. Oh, wow. So maybe if I glue the rest together, I can make a pretty necklace, like a goldfish, <laughs> Pepperidge Farm goldfish ne necklace. And maybe I could sell them at craft fairs throughout the five boroughs. Um, I'll think of something to do Monday nights, but I'm going to miss you guys. I'm going to miss everybody for the few weeks. I want to thank everybody for a stellar season. The right. summer break, it's always nice. We talk about mental health here sometimes. And I do think a break is necessary. Recalibrate. Um, we want to come back with the Sazon. You know, there were a couple of things we wanted to do this season. And like, we got to some of them, but it's all because we want to build it out perfectly to unveil to the listeners, to the Eloeleros. So please stay close to us because I think there's a lot in store um, when we come back. All right, I'm not gonna get emotional. Get out of here. And if you're Facts. in the uh, if you're in the Heights area, um, look look up look up 
look up because you might see Frank Nibs on a rooftop on one of yeah. You know, on, a right. random, on a random building rooftop. You guys are going to be invited before the uh, we come back. You have an invitation. It's in the mail almost. Uh, you guys have an invitation. I don't know. I'm going to take you up to the roof. I might take you up to the patio. It depends. The scaffold. Uh, yeah, the scaffold, the right. So popping. it's either or. I'm, I'm just, I haven't decided yet, but we'll see. Either or. We'll see. <laughs> we'll definitely see. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice. I'm going to give my uh, my Kelo okay, guys. Uh, my Kelo okay is two. The first one is uh, the first black vice president of Colombia, Francia Marquez. I think she got inaugurated. That was huge. That was like my Obama moment. I couldn't believe it. A black woman as vice president. Holy cow, that's huge. Wow. I wow. think she was inaugurated a few days ago. I don't know. And I want to give a huge RIP uh, to Olivia Newton-John. Today's 8-8. It's uh, the Lions Gate portal. She must have gone and ascend it huge uh loss um she's Greece, huge yo part. that's a she's that was yeah, an iconic role man yes 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 and, she, and then let's get physical that was my let's get yes, physical oh man God, that's my third me. date that's my third Damn, date song man. you guys are killing Amen. me man Amen. Amen. No, I know, I know. but in all i you know i i'm, I'm no like you want to do like, exercise oh <laughs> man like the bigger living newton john fan so this uh definitely a big loss all right yeah man that whole 80s that's like like you know they always say which one hits you i don't know i just saw it and it just hit me i'm like shit i'm like hit me too yo i'm like fuck? i'm like hopelessly devoted to olivia newton john's vocals She's a great <laughs> singer great you know song I mean? hopelessly devoted oh don't do it I mean, don't, don't do it with oh, the ripple man. effect in the water from Greece. Oh, I, I she plays Sandy scene. with the cigarette. Oh, my Travolta God. Like, Sandy, oh, oh my get God. out of here. You better shape up. That's like, you know, how many people sing that song at karaoke? Come on. Mm. Now, Everybody a, sings. I'm, a, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm more of a Grease 2 fan. That was Are you my Really? Game. Oh, come on, yeah. Jamie. No, not. man. Yo, Jamie, I no. Swear come I, on. They messed I, it up. They messed I it up. Actually, Don't... I have the vinyl of it, and I don't have a record player. That's how much I have Grease 2. <laughs> Jesus. I'm straight no, serious. Yo, Jamie, come on, bro. I'm they messed shocked. it up when they went to 2, That was two, the man. one that Thank I grew you. up with. I'm shocked. That was the one that I grew up with. Oh, I like roll, I love let's Greece. Go, let's rock and roll. But you, you know, get out of here. every on, time bro. I every time I go bowling, what? I sing to myself, "We gonna score." No. Gonna no. score. No. no. Are you Shit. kidding me? You, you know? know, I know Frank, it's it's it's, a, it's, me it's the lesser one to some people. To me, it's my favorite. Oh, yeah. We have to oh, do like man. a Grease one versus Grease two karaoke <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I'll I'll bring it. I, yo, Grease, yo, for some, sure. Karaoke, Greece he brings it. Bangers. I heard he brings it. Grease two got some bangers. <laughs> no way, not compared to Grease one. Oh my God, go Grease Lightning. You're burning hey, up the, 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 the Grease Lightning. I don't know the words. Oh, no, Grease Lightning. Screen. Grease Lightning. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And those lyrics were dirty. Ooh, what? the chicks scream. What? Ew, yes. is that what they say? Okay, stop. Okay, yeah. Grease one. Love it like to uh, Olivia Newton John, yo. To school, yeah. Sorry, I'm yeah. sorry. No way. No, it's the, oh, you know. Oh, <laughs> I want to go. Bang. Back to this <laughs> Chang, 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 to up. Little <laughs> like one, one, oh, one, 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 one. You know, I'll give you Summer Lovin'. That, Summer Lovin's the jam. And Summer Lovin' yes. is better than any song in both of those movies. Yes. Um, but my love is still for Grease too. And, and But anyway. Um, I can't believe again. we learned this about Jamie today. A lot of things are being reconsidered. <laughs> you know, for real. Right that shit, what a disappointment. <laughs> You're like Mr. Cinema. You're like Mr. Mr. Movie. I do Mr. have my movie guilty, phone. guilty pleasures, though. And wow. Michelle Pfeiffer was probably like one of my first crushes. And that that's movie. the only thing I liked about that movie. Her in it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. She was she was dope. She was hot. Yeah. Well, R.I.P. Olivia Newton John. We lost Facts. a good one. Only 73 years old. Not Jeez. that old. 73. Not that old. Man down. Oh. So yes, that sucks. Yeah. Okay. Well, Frank, thank you for that call out. Anything All else right. you got? You you got no, some that, Um, yeah. you know, like Eloedos. I'm gonna miss you over the summer. I'm gonna think about you. And we'll be back at the beginning of the season with fire. Bueno. Like always. As Rachel will say. Go ahead, Rachel. On that note, <laughs> we out. <laughs>